The here. weakness in the currency, there's a soft patch in the economy. The PBOC is pushing back. What's your prognosis right now? Well, certainly it's at a minimum a soft patch. We have a tug of war between the reopening tailwind. We think there's still a little more of that to come. We haven't fully played out the reopening. And the longer term headwinds from property bust and also a more sluggish export environment. So we think we'll see modestly above trend growth this year, but then deceleration into 2024 and beyond. Mm. So, so the first quarter wasn't just a blip, you think. W what still needed then to revive growth? And what does the rest of the year look like? We expect overall growth to be around 6% for the year and then to slow below 5% in 2024 and beyond. We think trend growth is probably 4%-ish, maybe a little below. Mm -hmm. In terms of this year, we had worries from clients about policy tightening. I think those have disappeared in light of the weak uh, April data. The question now is could we actually see material easing? But we don't think the authorities will be in a hurry to do a large-scale stimulus. Their growth target's only 5%. They may take some measures such as easing the triple R, the reserve requirement rate, but for now, uh, probably more focused on uh, structural issues in the economy, re reducing reliance on foreign supply, uh, things of this nature, rather than the precise rate of near-term growth. Yeah. Your second quarter forecast, is, is that at risk at all uh, in terms of downside probably risk? Probably some downside or? risk. Okay. We're projecting below 5% sequential growth, quarter-on-quarter yep. quarter growth. Mm. The year-over-year -year numbers are going to look very strong regardless because we're comparing to the period last year during the Shanghai lockdown. So no matter how soft the, 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 <laughs> the Q2 be data are, they'll look good on a year-over-year -year basis. That was kind of the story with April numbers. Retail sales up over 18% year-over-year, even though they were actually down month-over-month. Month. Hmm. Uh, part of that whole April activity data was the, the employment picture, where you, you're seeing at least the headline figures are, are trending lower, but then youth unemployment is at a record high. Why is that so high right now? We, there are a few factors contributing to higher youth unemployment. It's over 20 percent in April, a new record, despite the fact that, as you said, overall employment now to the low 5 percent range. We think it's a function of the kinds of jobs that younger people tend to go into. Uh, often in the services sector, around 80 percent of youths working in the services sector, that was clearly a sector badly affected by COVID restrictions. And now, even though those restrictions are coming off, we haven't seen a complete normalization of that a part of the economy. You also have a dichotomy to some extent between the kinds of degrees college graduates are getting and in some cases the demand for those graduates. Mm -hmm. So there's a bit of a mix issue in terms of what jobs are demanded and, and, and what's being created. But I think the, the, the basic challenge is the uptake of growth and, and, and employment intensive sectors like services still hasn't been high enough for long enough to absorb that. Is it, is it consequential, this group of the, this particular group within the labor force? In other words, how big of a deal is this? It's around it's 7 to 8 percent of total employment is okay. in the 16 to 24 age group. Of course, there are concerns were there to be prolonged high unemployment in that mm. seg segment, would it have implications for social stability and other issues? And so we think policymakers will be quite attentive to that and looking for ways to target employment growth in that sector.